Good morning and welcome to the instructional handover video for this 2023 Burson Elysio C602. I'm going to walk you around the outside of the vehicle first and then I'll move you on inside. So we're going to start from the driver's side. So we're based on the Fiat cab. We've got the Fiat alloys just here. Got the mirrors now on most of them. They are manually folding mirrors, but this customer has gone for the electric option. And the electric option is just activated from just inside with these switches here. And you will have your mirror, uh, standard mirror sort of uh, adjusters just on here. That'll be both on the manual and on the automatic. Lock button here, and then your electric window switches just there. We've got the Remis cab blinds that are fitted, and they just concertina down just like that. So nice and easy, just gentle with these, and then it will slip back in place just there. We've got the new sort of drinks holders and, and uh, storage com compartments just found there. Underneath the driver's seat, that's where you'll find the leisure battery. Now this one's got two, so generally there'll be a blank space here, but this has got two. And you'll see that there's a main couple of fuses there to check if you aren't getting power just at the front. Just lifts up and then a portion's just like so. We've got an electric step just there and that is activated with the switch just on the floor there that detracts and puts it out nice and easy just like that the door slides nice and easy there and we've got a full fly screen blind just there to stop any insects going in there this is fitted with the Thule awning and I'll send a separate video of how to use the Thule awning and you'll notice the pop-ups up I'll come to the pop-up later some versions are non pop up some are so it depends whether you've checked that elevating pop-up roof option with your dealer at point of uh, ordering the vehicles towards the back of the vehicles there's nothing really on the most of the back panel apart from the water filler point so this is the blue one mark clearly there and this is the water filler point so water into the vehicle towards the back of the vehicle we've got a high up brake light and reversing camera just there and this particular customer has selected the reverse sensors which are lower down just in the bumper area just here. We've then opened the back door. We have got the gas area just here. So that is located in this cupboard, just two little buttons to open it up and that's where you will find your gas locker. So there's room for two gas bottles and your regulator is just there. You do get a pigtail for propane gas supplied from the manufacturer. And in the little black case there, that is the Fiat sort of toolkit and jack that they supply with every van that's sold. We've got a 12 volt charging point just here, blowers for the heating. And in this little panel above here, you'll find this is where the water tank is. So the red cap being the entrance to get in and clean it as the sticker shows. You've got a sensor on here, overflow here, filler point just on there and this little wheel as the sticker says, will allow the tank to either go up to 100 litres or 20 litres. You empty it and fill it up by turning the wheel. So if we turn it anti-clockwise, it will empty. If we turn it clockwise, now one turn until it clicks, we'll fill it up to 20 litres and then we'll overflow. Keep turning it through until it's finger tight and that will fill it up to the full 100 litres. To empty it, you do the opposite. So, so the first click we'll do it to 20 keep going we'll open it fully and we'll fully drain the fresh water tank so that is your fresh water fill and drain just that black little wheel there yeah and that can be found underneath there just nice and neat there so the bed will lift up yeah it will lift up there and there's a little buckle there that goes into the little press stud just up there and that will hold it up yeah, if you want to store anything in. I'll come onto the cushions after. This is the dine it to birth option, but I will come onto that later in the video for you. On closing it, just make sure you close the left hand door before the right. And we have got blinds and fly screens just on there, as well as an opening window, which just opens just like so. Pull it tight, lock it in place, and make sure that these are locked before you go on your onward journey. So we've got one of them on either of the door. We've got a window on the left hand side. And then below that, we've got your toilet cassette. So that's just in the little flat there. And that's where the toilet cassette can be found. 
So to pull the toilet cassette out, you must have the blade valve closed inside the motorhome, and I'll show you inside how to do that. Then simply put your thumb underneath, lift it over and slide it out. Now that will release the cassette from the toilet. On the cassette itself, you've got the emptying neck. So you remove that and unscrew it and tip it upside down, that will empty it. And the most important thing on this one is you've got a breather valve. So when you're emptying it upside down, if you press that button in, it will re release the air and allow it to come out on a faster, steadier flow. We've also got wheels, just there. Yep, and we've got a handle that pulls out of there as well. Once cleaned and emptied, slide it back in and it should just clip over just like that. Below that, we've got a sticker and that's for your wastewater. So your wastewater drain. So all you do is turn it quarter of a turn to empty it and quarter of a turn to fill it back up. And that is anything that you put down the shower, the sink, so grey water. That key is fully removable put it in a safe place so you don't lose it but that is your emptying of the grey water it will lock and that locks with the one burst key uh, that is sweetered you do get a spare one as well in front of that we've got the boiler vent so this is a Truma boiler vent so make sure you just be careful it does have a little symbol on saying it does get hot so just be careful of that don't need to remove anything on this one just leave it to be free uh, to expel any of the fumes out of the heating system Mains plug-in point is at the side there and we've got a nice little symbol to tell us that it's there. To release it, just press that little button down where my thumb is and pull your mains cable out of the compartment. In front of that, we've got diesel and add blue. Diesel works off the filler key, the add blue just twists and opens. Yeah, so that can be found there. Into the actual passenger side area, we've got bonnet release catch. You just pull it down and that will open the bonnet. Your engine battery can be located just under there. So again, remembering, leisure battery under there, engine battery under the panel there. And then under the seat, again, if we lift that up, this is your main e-box. So this is where you will find all your fuses for the varying items in the vehicle. Just underneath that passenger seat. Electric window switch, just there. And again, it's fitted with the Remis cab lines. Onto the bonnet. So above the burst the sign, you lift up the bonnet once you've done the handle, you'll see a little yellow lever. That will lift up the bonnet and give you access to the engine bay. In the engine bay, you've got your negative point. Positive point is just there on that cap and it's underneath the little black cupboard there. You've got your oil filler point and your screen wash fill to the left hand side. When you finish going over that, then just gently close it and that will allow you then to drive on or do whatever you want to do next. So that's the outside of the vehicle done. Let's move on inside. Now a couple of bits when we come into the vehicle before we turn the lights on, which will be quite important for you. In the compartment next to here, you'll see there's two little valves. They're your water drain valves. So you've got to turn them anti-clockwise to empty and clockwise to fill it up. If you forget, then simply water will come out of the vehicle directly underneath the van. So remember those two when you're draining down the water system to the left hand side. The other main drain points in the vehicle can be found under here. And you've two additional ones. So you've got this little yellow rocker valve, which you'll need to flip down to get the water to stay in the vehicle. Yeah, now it doesn't matter if it's towards the back or towards the front, it's just got to be down and when you're emptying it, it needs to be in up position. Now hiding just behind that is your frost protection valve. And this is a two part valve. You've got to turn the diamond and then right at the bottom, there's a push button in as well. So if you forget that, they will simply dump out of the middle of the vehicle. So just be conscious of that, there's four things. Frost protection valve, yellow valve, and the two valves that are in this compartment here. Yeah? Now in this compartment, you've got your main RCD. So this is where all your trip switches are, and you've got a little oval test button to the left-hand side. So that's your main bits underneath that seat there, and to the side of the kitchen area there. Start in the vehicle. We'll need to use the control panel above the head here. 
So at the minute you can see there's a symbol saying that we're plugged in. What we need to do then is turn the power onto the vehicle. And any lights that were left on previous will come on at this point. The pump will automatically start up. Yeah, so make sure if you've drained it down for the winter period that you have closed that tap down. Yeah. Otherwise the tap will run. You might hear the tap. Yeah, running at the minute. So make sure they're closed before you then turn on that button because otherwise your pump will run. Yeah. Now once we've done that, we can then go back to this control panel and if we press and hold that, it will tell us what battery voltage is in our leisure battery. Press and hold that, it will tell us if there's any water in the fresh water and again in the wastewater. So quite a simple, easy control panel to, to navigate. Yeah, and remember when leaving it, just turn the power off. When it going in, turn the power on. So several other lights will work independent. So these two lights are your welcome light and your outside light, which are above. And then we've got another light switch here, which does the main light inside the vehicle. That's just located there. Next to that is a mains point. So a mains plug, so just be aware of that. And here we've got a little pull up additional storage area. To release it down underneath it, you just pull your finger and it will release it down just like so. We've got the two burner gas. Again, it gives you a bit of guidance on these of what pan size. So please sort of have a look at that and make sure that you're following the guidance. Please don't hang anything above it and make sure you cool it down before you put it down, don't put it down on naked flame, otherwise that glass will, will smash. The, the bathroom, uh, sorry, the, the sink in the kitchen area is clearly marked on the top, hot or cold. So once you've come to the van and you put your power on, we've filled up the water, we've cleaned all the, uh, shut all the drain valves. What we want to do first of all is turn it to hot and then lift that on. Now if I'm quiet, you'll hear the pump start in. Now don't leave that too long if you've no water in because you'll burn the pump out. But what you want to do is pull all the air through the boiler. Yep, so it does spit and spurt initially. You can change the angle of that tap there. So run it until you get a steady stream. Now I would advise you to do that both in the uh, kitchen area and in the bathroom area. Again, the bathroom one, which doubles up as a tap and a shower, is clearly marked on the top just there to tell you whether it's hot or cold. So run it through on both of those, yeah? Once you've done that, then you can go to your control panel above and to the left here, which is the Truma one, to select how we want to heat and the hot water and the vehicle itself. Now, what I always do first of all is I always go to the source. So if I've got my gas and my electric on, it doesn't matter. But in this case, if I've only got electric on, I'll go to the electric first and just select that symbol so that no fault lights come up on that control panel. What I want to do then is go to the motorhome and click it and turn the temperature on. So choose whatever temperature you want and then press the circular button in the middle. Yeah, it will flash until it's up to temperature above that line. Yeah. Now if you wanted just to do the heating and you didn't want to put water in it, we would skip the water one and go to the actual uh, fan and we'll either select eco which is slow or high which is fast. You have a third option on this and you'll need to run the heating for about five minutes till the fan kicks in. Then you can click on that again and you can turn the dial to the left and it will go up to the right sorry, and it will give you the option of boost. Now boost will take all the power away if you're trying to do both uh, hot water and heating to just the one that you're selecting. So in that case it would be the heating. Yeah. Now on that, if you're selecting it as it's sort of shown here, then you don't need to put any water into the boiler. You'll not damage it by doing any putting any water in the boiler, but just make sure that your taps are closed. If you're wanting to do the hot water, you'll move it over to the little symbol here. You'll press that on, and you'll select either e eco, which is approximately 40 degrees, hot, which is approximately 60 degrees, and then you've got the boost element, which will allow you to then heat that up to temperature as quick as possible, but it won't allow the heating to work. So if you're wanting it to be heating and hot water at the same time, you'll go hot on here and high on the fan. So at the minute I've no water, so I'm not going to put it on. Please don't put it on without any water. The next option along is your fuel source. So you've seen me select electric one. That's electric one kilowatt. We can go electric two kilowatt. 
we can go a mixture of gas and electric mixture on one and two so that's one and two kilowatts and a mixture and just gas only so make sure before you turn this control panel on for the trimmer that you've turned your gas on or you're plugged into mains on the flip side of it when you're going away make sure that you turn this unit off and you do that by pressing and holding it before you unplug your mains electric and your gas why am i saying that to you it will just reduce the amount of error cords that you get on this control panel the majority of error code faults that are rung through to the office are generally because it's trying to find a source and it's not been turned on so just a little pointer to bear in mind so that's your main control panels for the vehicle and the heating and the hot water the little thermostat here is what will control the temperature as well so if you're wondering what that is there so further around the vehicle now we've got the sky roof light so bright and airy, opens like any roof light. Please don't drive away with that, so just pull them through. These ones in the middle have a press button. Make sure you press them in, otherwise you'll snap that button in there. And lift it open, and then what you'll do is you'll just wind the wheel tight, and it will hold it open nicely there. When you want to close it, just release it, and make sure that then before you go on your onward journey that you've moved all of those back in the lockable position we do have a blind and a fly screen on here as well we've got a couple of the home lights so these are chargeable removable lights so they just magnetize on so you can remove them round if you want to yeah or you can simply put them on and then they will just charge just back up there once they charge then the light will go off We've got a couple of seat belts here in this area, which are uh, just tucked behind. So seat belts are just behind there. If you don't want to use them, then you'll just tuck them behind your seats nice and neat. The table lifts off just there, and I'll show you how to make up this dinette to berth in a minute. We do have an extender. So if you pull down that lever there and swing the table around, it will give you a bit more space for the person that's dining in the driver's seat. Should they want that? We've got a couple of USB points up there. We've got a uh, 12 volt socket just up there. The cupboards open by pressing the buttons in. Just opening them up there and pressing it back in before you move off. Same on this one, just open it up. We've got your pack in there from the Fiat, the Burster and your tire inflation kit, which is supplied with the vehicle. The light above the kitchen just simply turns off just with a little rocker switch just there. And let's close them down and we've got a couple more switches just in here for the bedroom area so that one does the ambient lighting in the front which is the left and to the rear which is the right another main socket just there and then we've got accessibility here to the drawers so we've got storage in here they're all soft clothes so just be gentle all some of the items that come with it so you've got an aerial cable a pigtail uh, your feet for your awning and then you've got your utensil drawer just there towards the rear in the compartment here you've got a storage area so again make sure before you're on with journey you're pressing it in we've got the oven option so it has uh, an igniter it has a light so you just press and hold it opens from that way down and then you've got the temperature gauge to open and close it. Just that. One thing I missed just in the kitchen area are your isolation valves. So they're all to the left hand side. As you see the video, they're all currently in the open and usable position. So I'll refer back to this if you're unsure. Just there. So again, just making sure that we close all those. Next to the oven, we've got a press stud storage area, hanging area, just here. And again, you're making sure that you press them in before you move on. And again, above it, we've got another separation area here for your belongings. Around the back, we've got two more storage areas, a light switch up there, plug socket, USB points, and a couple of the points to move the home lights. Oh, sorry, one point there and one point here to move the home lights should you want it. Underneath there, you've just got accessibility to the second part of the tank if you're wondering what that second one is there and then we've got a bit of storage 
above there as well. Yeah. Coat hook just here. The bathroom area divides off just with a sliding door. And in here we've got a light switch, so just remember that. We've got a storage area just up here. And then we've got a little towel or coat hook just there. So right at the beginning of the video, I mentioned about the toilet cassette. So that can just be found here. So it just slide around. There's a flush button just here to flush it when you want to use it. And if you lift up the lid, so I mentioned the blade valve, that's the valve in the toilet and it's operated just here. Yeah. So what you do is you slide it towards the front of the vehicle. That will open up the cassette. At that stage there, you will not be able to pull the toilet cassette out. So that must be in the back position, just there. Yeah. And then when you want to use it as a, uh, as a shower room, you're advised to spin it all the way back around that way. You've got a little toilet uh, holder rail there. And you've got a clip here. To push that clip in, yeah, move the shower out the way. Yeah, the tap out the way. And that then slides around. We'll expose the bathroom area just there. In here, we've got a window. If you want to cover that over while you're showering, then you've got a slider just there. Open it afterwards and you can ventilate it there. And the shower holes then will lift up and go nice and neatly into the shower area so that you've got a nice, neat shower just like so. When you finish, just remove it and it will then feed back into that area. Nice and neat for you. When you finish showering, again, just move your unit back round and it will just hold in place just like so. Yeah, to close out the long. So, make up front bed area. I'm going to do that in a sec couple of little parts, so I'll come on to that in a minute. And we'll, we'll tie that in with the back bed area. So the back bed area, quite sort of self-explanatory and they are curved so that you'll know where they go. So the first piece just goes nice and neatly in that corner and it's curved. And then this one will open up and fit nice and neatly in here, just like so. Yeah. And then we've got the straps that will hold up the bed area if you want to do that for storage. A little clip for the frame to go into. Yeah, and I'll show you how to do that now. So what you'll do is you'll push the mattress in half, up and out the way. Push the unit back so it sits into there. Now to release it back down, you'll just need to push that little fitting in and it will release and you would clip it into there. You can also remove the support here. So if you've got any longer, that just lifts up and out the way so that you've got a full thorough way in that back area. Okay. And then it will leave a large storage area there if you want to secure anything down we've got a couple of the shackles that you can tie onto and underneath here we've got another storage area for you belonging just there another heat event in the back area here and we've got the tie downs in the floor as well yeah so it's up to you how you want to set up this back area it's quite multifunctional on that area when setting it up the next part will come to setting up the dinette to birth and this is an option Again, I'll start by removing the cushions and show you step by step. So your first step being, you'll see there's two rails. And that means there's two positions, a hook to the underneath of the table. What we'll need to do first of all is remove the table as I've done here. And then remove off the leg. It just pushes in and slides off. And we'll hook the table onto the lower rail. That will go on just like so. And then we go on like that. I found it easier doing it with the back facing towards the front of the vehicle. The next part you'll need this infill section. And there's a couple of parts onto this. So there's a leg that supports it. And then there's a slide section in. So what you're probably better doing then is at this point just opening the door. And the slide cutout section here goes in between the tables just in this part here. So just like that. The leg supports it there. And then this section here just slides it in between and then just edges round the edge of the table just like so. Your other cushion then goes in place there and that's what makes up that dinette to birth. 
option for you just like so and then by removing the cushions putting the leg back on you can then attach the table back to the side underneath here you have a little bit of storage so another area to utilize mains point and an, and an eating point just on there as well that is your extension piece that will swivel around as i mentioned earlier and then just clicks back in place lastly we have got the pop-up so the pop-up pushes up it's got zips that remove the curtains to let the light in and we've got a ladder now the ladder is in two parts i'll just pull that down now and the ladder breaks down in two parts you just release these little butterfly clips and it will for storage breakdown when you're using it it will clip onto the ladder section here at the top yeah now you have a safety net that pulls across here yeah and sits into this side here yeah and that's to stop anyone from falling out of there like i say the light will come in if you remove these panels flood the van with lots of light you've got two side ones as well either side and a large bed area yeah now when putting it away you just kind of reverse it pop these up and slide them in so unclip the ladders off there and then you'll pull it down on the roof so you probably want to pull that down before you do the ladders and the handles are in the canopy just up there and then you pull it down like so you'll need two hands to do it it's quite a strong ram that holds it up and then i'll show you how to lock them in place so what we're trying to do at this point here we've got a little turnbuckle and what we're trying to do is we're trying to get it over the front of here once we've got it on that then we can turn the lever and lock it in place so you want to do that on both sides now once you've got it into it in place you'll turn that and it will pull it and hold it in place and then you flip it back so turn it in place flip it back and then you've got a safety one which will just then clip into here and just give a secondary support just for instance say if that buckle came off that will hold it in place there there's a little light that turns on and off and there's a usb charging point on that and that's our instructional video guys i hope you find the video useful enjoyable uh on that side of it cab wise we've got the fiat new cab so digital display multifunctional steering wheel this is based on the nine speed gearbox we've got traction plus hill descent mute button aircon charging points for usb and jack point we've got the multimedia system just in there which has a reverse camera on it bluetooth dab and we've got the pull-up flap from the front blinds on the front just pull together so pinch and then we'll magnetize using the magnets that are in there on the actual front and on the seats themselves to lock them in place and remove them you'll need to adjust this little lever here that will lock it in place and when we spin it around we've got the height adjusters at the front the back lift there we've also got the electronic handbrake which is just on there as well which is a new feature for this particular range so when you're back in place the little bars will sit forward and just release them to swivel it round to move the bar closer there's a little bar underneath here which needs lifting up and that will move it forward and backwards but that concludes the video all you'll need to do now is turn off the power when leaving and then unplug the vehicle but that's the video for the new 2023 Burstner Elysio c602 thank you